We now proceed with the last part of our discussion here in Unit 1, The Invisible World, and we'll be talking about a systematic approach. In this part of the discussion, this video will be talking about the definition of taxonomy, the different parts of taxonomy like classification, nomenclature, and how organisms are, or, or specifically microorganisms, are classified. So let's proceed. Now, the first thing we need to do is to define what taxonomy is. Taxonomy is defined as the organizing, the classifying, and naming of living things. This was formally uh, initiated, originated by Carl von Linne, who is also known as Carolus Linnaeus. Now, taking note that taxonomy has three important parts, which is organizing, classifying, and naming, these concerns are as, followed, as follows defined. Classification is defined as the orderly arrangement of organisms into group. In other words, ang gusto natin gawin dito ay uh, yung mga lahat ng organismo sa buong mundo ay igugrupo natin ito into different groups. So we're going to be taking note of the similarities of organisms so that we can group them together. And we'll take note of the differences of organisms so that we can separate each, each of these organisms from each other. Another important is the nomenclature, which is assigning names. So in other words, very important that we take note of what names are given to the organisms. And we'll be talking about that in a little while. Another one is identification. And this is defined as determining and recording traits of organisms for placement into taxonomic schemes. The difference between classification and identification would be in classification, you establish the groups. In identification, the groups are already established, but you now have organisms that are unnamed or organisms that don't know what particular group in. So you try to determine through their characteristic which particular group you will put this organism into. So that will be the definition, the difference between classification identification, and we just mentioned about nomenclature. Now, the most famous important person we have to remember for taxonomy is the Swedish botanist, zoologist, and physician named Carolus Linnaeus. As mentioned a while ago, he is also known as Carl von Linne. And in 1735, Linnaeus published his booklet, Systema Naturae, which is simply an 11-page booklet. And it's very interesting that a new field in science, in biology, was established just because of an 11-page booklet. He proposed a system of categorizing and naming organism, and he wanted to use standard format so scientists could discuss organism using consistent terminology. Now, this is very important because uh, not only in their time, but as in our time as well, different countries, different places will have different names pertaining to the same organism. So, halimbawa, sa Filipino, ang tinatawag natin na ibon, in America, they call it generally as a bird. And in different countries, you have different names for this same organism. So the colloquial name will differ from place to place. So this will be very difficult if scientists are talking to each other. However, if you have a predetermined uh, name, that, uh, name that has been agreed upon by scientists, or it is the format of the name that has been agreed upon by scientists, it will be very easy for scientists to understand each other when they are talking about the same organism. So when we say homo sapiens in whatever part of the world, you are talking about mankind. If you're talking about Felis domesticus, you are very, very, fam you are very, very sure that we are talking about the cat, or in Filipino, pusa, or whatever name is given in other countries. But we are very sure that we are talking about the same animal because we are talking about the same scientific name. Now, in addition to that, Carolus Linnaeus also divided the world into three kingdoms. At first, the animal, the plant, and the mineral. But later on, the mineral kingdom was dropped. So Linnaeus is credited to have given the division of all organisms on the earth as part of the animal kingdom or part of the plant kingdom. This is called the two kingdom scheme. So it's very important for you to remember that it was Linnaeus who established the two kingdom scheme. 
In addition to that, he grouped organisms using a hierarchy of increasingly specific levels and sublevels based on their similarities. So groups, and these are given as follows. The broadest would be domain, and this will include archaea, bacteria, and eukarya. We'll talk about this a little bit later. Under the domain is the kingdom. Under the kingdom is phylum or division. Phylum will be given for the animals and division will be given for the plants or plant-like. And class will be next. Under the class are different orders. Under the order are family. Under the families, genus. And under the genus would be species. Here's an example of the naming scheme that is based on Linnaeus, different levels of uh, organ organization. Uh, particularly, let's take note of Colorado potato beetle. The kingdom is Animalia. So it's an animal. The phylum is Arthropoda. So it means it has jointed legs. The class is Insecta. It is an insect. Order Coleoptera. Family Chrysomelidae. Genus Leptinotarsa. And the species will be L, which is Leptinotarsa. L. Decemliniata. So this is how the scientific names are written. So one important thing that you have to take note of that the species is the most basic and ba we have to take note that the species, now one of the most important thing we have to take note is that the species is the male, one of the important, one of the most important thing we have to take note is that the species is the most specific and basic of the taxonomic unit. In other words, ang pinaka-basic, pinaka-maliit na taxonomic unit is called the species. Now, in the 1800s, there has been some ta many taxonomies that have developed and it took account the evolutionary relationship or phylogenies of all different species of organism. And in making these phylogenies, taxonomies that are dependent on the evolutionary relationship, they took, took note of the relatedness of organism and were inferred in the, uh, using the following. They made use of visible similarities. They made use such as such characteristics as the presence or absence of hair or the number of limbs. Probably they made use of genetic comparison, biochemical, and also embryological comparison. That is how early taxonomies and phylogenies were made. It is by comparing the similarities and differences. Now, for Linnaeus, the tree of life just contained two branches, as we mentioned a while ago, the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom. Uh, in 1866, Ernest Haeckel, a name that you need to remember, proposed the addition of two more kingdoms, Protista for unicellular organisms and Monera for unicellular organisms that lack the nuclei, just like bacteria. So you now have four important kingdoms, and this was established by Ernest Haeckel. As the study of taxonomy continued, in 1969, the American ecologist Robert Whittaker added another kingdom, and this is the kingdom fungi, which will be pertaining to the mushrooms, to the yeast, and other organisms related with that. Whittaker also added a level of categorization above the kingdom level. He talk, talked about eukaryotes and he talk about, talked about prokaryotes. Now, the eukaryotes are organisms that have membrane-bound nuclei in the cells, while prokaryotes do not have any membrane-bound nuclei. In other words, ang eukaryotes ay walang, uh, merong nucle nucleus, ang prokaryotes ay walang nucleus. So this was added by Robert Whittaker, another name that you need to remember. So at this point, we now have uh, the five kingdom scheme that was made by Whitaker. And for several years, this phylogeny was the standard uh, belief and standard tree that was considered especially in many textbooks. So the prokaryota only contains the kingdom Monera, while the empire, empire eukaryota would be containing the other four, the fungi, the protista, the plantae, and also the animalia. So we can see in this picture, Carolus Linnaeus in 1758 established that two kingdom scheme. Ernest Haeckel in 1866 established the four kingdom scheme, Monera, 
protists, plants, and animals, while Robert Whittaker in 1969 made the Five Kingdom Scheme, the Monera, the Protista, Plants, Animalia, and also the Fungi. 